we continue to experience sporadic um, cases of COVID. We actually um, had a positive case, so we're back up to one. Uh, so within the last couple of weeks, two to three weeks, we would have had um, between zero and one um, case of COVID. Now, the evidence to date is that um, we do not have any clusters of COVID. Uh, so despite recording the 39 new cases a couple of months ago, or maybe a few months, it probably is closer to three months now, uh, what we have here actually is actually sporadic um, cases of COVID and uh, we don't have any clusters and there's no evidence of any significant uh, community spread. Uh, but again, it shows that we have to be so careful. I mean, even though we do not have, uh, from time to time, we do not have any um, laboratory confirmed cases of COVID, it doesn't mean that there isn't any COVID um, within the society. And we'd have seen, for example, that countries that have kept their um, borders um, shuttered for several months they too have had um, cases of COVID. Uh, one of the most recent ones would have been um, Nevis that recently reported um, two cases of COVID. And as you know, the borders there have been closed for several months now. So point that I made um, several months ago, back in March, I would have said to the people of Antigua and Barbuda that um, we could not keep our borders um, shuttered. And in any case, there's, it is impossible to seal off you know, your, your borders from, um, from COVID. I mean, there are just so many possibilities of COVID entering our shores, even um, by way of um, cargo coming to the country. Uh, many, many areas. Uh, the key thing uh, is to make sure that we have the type of health infrastructure to manage cases of COVID. And at the same time, to have the health protocols to uh, manage the transmission or at least to reduce, if not prevent, the transmission of COVID, especially insofar as community spread is concerned. Now, the particular member... Or individual that um, that um, contracted COVID. I'm told that um, his family members were tested and that they all negative. However, the contact contact tracing team has not been able to quite determine the source. That is something that they're working on, and we just want to remind our people of the need to continue to respect the protocols. And even though the law or the regulations um, state that you know you should be socially distanced and that you can have gatherings up to 25 we still would like to discourage individuals from engaging in private parties or any engagement that does not include your your direct family your immediate family your um your household i should say rather your your household anyone with whom you become in contact outside of your household you should be protecting yourself you should be socially distancing wearing a mask and so on. So it doesn't matter that you may have, um, you know, family members who live outside of um, your, uh, your household. I mean, whenever you become in contact with those family members, uh, you are required to continue to exercise vigilance and to adhere strictly to the protocols. Uh, what has been happening in many instances, and I'm told too that in this latest case, the suspected, uh, or let's say the, the, the possible occasion in which this person could have contracted the virus, do not quite determine, was at a party, a relatively small party. But again, even though you may have less than 25 individuals, you know, the possibility of an individual having um, COVID who is not part of your household is real. And even if it's a single person and that person is not a part of your household, you're required to protect yourself, to remain vigilant and to ensure that you comply strictly with the protocols as established because at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that the protocols as well as the um, contact tracing, those are what would have um, helped us from um, literally having any committee spread here at Antigua and Barbuda. And I know that many people, when they hear that we have zero or one case of um, COVID, that they become somewhat complacent. And I continue to warn our people against um complacency and the need for them to remain personally responsible and to be vigilant. I mean, I continue to state these words ad nauseum, you know, to encourage personal responsibility and for our people to guard against any form of complacency, which evidently is beginning to set in, you know, within the society. I imagine that, um, you know, you know, some people are probably um, COVID tired and, um, uh, they, they just want to get on with their lives, but they have to understand that um, COVID is still an existential threat. 
and uh, not only an ex- existential threat to Antigua and Barbuda, but the entire Caribbean and the world. I mean, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, uh, jo- Boris Johnson just recently announced that the United Kingdom uh, is now faced with a second wave of COVID, or maybe a third wave for that matter, uh, as numbers um, con- continue to rise in the United Kingdom. Now, it is expected that um, COVID will become even more potent in the winter. So whereas um, we would have seen somewhat of a reprieve in that um, those individuals who uh, would have um, come here with COVID, because most of our cases are really imported, um, imported cases, uh, most of them are actually asymptomatic. But from all indications, um, in the fall, late in the fall, and certainly going into winter, we are likely to see more potent cases of um of COVID with heavier viral loads. And if we become complacent and, you know, we continue to import these cases because the country's borders are open, then the possibility of transmission to the domestic population, you know, becomes um, real. And, um, you know, the possibility too of having, you know, a few fatalities, you know, could actually, um, you know, could actually, um, could actually happen. And, you know, those are things that we may, may not want to contemplate, but we just have to remain very, very vigilant and to continue to uh, exercise personal responsibility and to adhere to the protocols. I mean, there's no other way out. I mean, there, there are no really effective um, treatments or any vaccines to date. And um, even though there's promise for uh, certain um, treatments and um, vaccines and that it will become available by the end of the year or early next year, is no guarantee. So we have to learn to work and live with, um, with, with, with COVID, but at the same time, we have to be responsible. We cannot afford to become complacent. So personal responsibility and vigilance, and those are our watchwords, and they should remain our watchwords until such time as COVID becomes a thing of the past.